first met 124 years ago and through most of the 20th century. But once Virginia Tech joined Virginia in the ACC, the clash for the Commonwealth Cup intensified into one of the great rivalries in college football. For 15 straight years, one way or another, the Hokies have triumphed. But the Cavaliers believe a new chapter begins today. The ACC Coastal Division title, bragging rights, and the Cup all on the line on this Thanksgiving Friday. Series on a gorgeous Thanksgiving Friday in Charlottesville, Virginia. We got a rivalry for you in this state. The Hokies of Virginia Tech, they come up the road to take on the Cavaliers of Virginia. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Dave Fleming, Jim Moore, Paul Carcaterra is with us as well. Hope you enjoyed the holiday with your uh, family. Now we got a full day of college football. What a way to get it started. These two teams have met 101 times, and rarely in the long history of this rivalry has this game meant more. All the chaos in the ACC this year, on this side of things at least, has given way to a simple scenario. The winner of this game will play Clemson for an ACC championship next weekend. Two months ago, Jim, if you had said that about Virginia Tech people would have thought you were crazy how did the Hokies turn their season around well I think two things number one quarterback Hen and Hooker and the, the, what he's meant to their offense but more specifically their defense the way their defense is playing they're working on nine straight shutout quarterback or quarters this is a defense that plays tough physical aggressive they attack and I'm excited to see what Bud Foster and this Virginia Tech defense have cooked up today to try to defend Virginia's dynamic quarterback Bryce Perkins and Perkins is a guy that came in here kind of under the cover of darkness. He'd been a junior college guy coming off a neck injury. Not a lot of people thought he could be an effective quarterback. And yet now he has a chance to ride the, the white horse as he leads this resurgence of this Virginia team. And a win today would cement his legacy as a Virginia great. Yeah, I think it really would. And they are so excited about this game here in Charlottesville. It's been a long time coming for the Cavaliers, hoping that this is the year big crowd Hokies Cavaliers Virginia Tech won the toss they have deferred so the Cavaliers will have the ball first Joe Reed one of the most dangerous kick return men in the country does not have a chance to return this kick so the Virginia offense comes on the field our Thanksgiving edition of Kark after kick let's go down to Paul Carcaterra you can feel the stakes are higher than normal in this one Dave and there is a blatant dislike between these two teams. Virginia Tech quarterback Hendon Hooker told me that they are taught to hate Virginia. The problem is for his defense today, they have to deal with Bryce Perkins. He's a complete program changer. Bronco Mendenhall said it best to me. He's almost a one-man band. He's been gasoline on the acceleration of this program. It's a good way to put it. There may not be a single player in college football who is more important to his offense than Bryce Perkins, who is incomplete on his first pass attempt of the day. Bryce Perkins is really a tremendous player, and what he does is he extends plays with his feet. It really, UVA plays a wildcat type of offense with a quarterback that can throw the ball. That's how significant he is to this offense. We'll see him throw it. We'll see him run it. He's going to play fake here and go down. Man, he just got swarmed. And that's the Virginia Tech defense that you've been talking about here already today. The Hokies have had this remarkable turnaround in season led by Bud Foster's defense. Well, they're an aggressive defense, and they're going to bring guys from all over the field. They're going to bring linebackers. They're going to bring safeties. They're going to bring corners. They're going to try to fill gaps here today so that Bryce can't find lanes with which he can escape and make plays downfield. And you saw that on that play right there. So the four-yard loss, it's third and long, not the way that Virginia wanted to start this game on offense. We'll see Perkins in the shotgun. Now he's going to take off. That looked like a designed run, and Perkins is going to get the first down. You're going to see this out of Bryce Perkins a lot today. He'll drop back, and if, any, if nothing's there, then you're going to see designed quarterback draw. So he's got the option to throw it down the field, and he's got the option to run it if there's nothing there. And watch Bryce get out and go. He's got overfield ability. He's got speed. He's got size. He's got strength. But they don't want to live in third and long. That was a quick decision. He took one look downfield and then decided to go, and it was a good decision. Perkins now on the move, dumps it short. It's a big hit, incomplete. 
Shamari Connor, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, he has become one of the big playmakers on this Virginia Tech defense. This Virginia Tech defense is extremely physical at all positions. They've got a big secondary. they got four of their players in the secondary that weigh over 200 pounds, and, and that's big for the college level. And they're not afraid to get up and pressure you on the outside and play physical inside. It's a fun defense to watch. It's kind of always been how that man has designed his defense, and it's another storyline today. It is Bud Foster's last regular season game as the defensive coordinator, one of the great assistant coaches in the country, one of the great football coaches over the last many decades. Perkins in the pocket, shows off that arm strength, but the ball was not caught incomplete. So third down and long once again. These are tough situations, Virginia, to be in because Bud Foster now has his whole playbook open. He can sit back in zone, he can play man combination coverages, or he can decide to pressure Bryce Perkins. And if you're Bud Foster in Virginia Tech, after the way that first third down conversion went, do you have to have somebody who is basically on top of Perkins? We'll see, Hokies almost yeah. jumped off. Yeah, they were gonna bring it there. They were gonna bring Ashby. Ashby was gonna come off the edge. Let's see if they change their coverage. It looks like they did. Rayshard Ashby, who today is one of two Virginia Tech players wearing the honored number 25. Perkins gonna look like almost the same play, and nobody there once again. Perkins into Virginia Tech territory, a second consecutive third and long conversion with his speed. Well, that once again looked like he had the option to throw it. But you'll watch the design quarterback draw late with the lead blocker, and he gets over the field. Virginia Tech has to stay in their rush lanes. They've got to put dots on him. They can't void areas where he can exploit them down the field with his legs. Third and 14, he got 19. Third and 10, he got 16. And so now first down in Virginia Tech territory, a handoff straight ahead, and a nice productive run. Wayne Talapapa, who missed last week with the carry, Bryce Perkins. Jim's been telling his story already. The senior playing his final regular season game with the Cap. Great football family. His dad, great player at Arizona State. His uncle, longtime NFL career. His brother Paul currently playing in the NFL. You coached him at UCLA. And you mentioned the circuitous route to this campus in Charlottesville. He has changed the Virginia program there were a lot of people who thought hey great athlete not a quarterback he has proven everybody wrong he play fakes and is on the move again there goes number three Bryce Perkins out into the open cuts it back touchdown Virginia yards and that drive was almost all number three it was all number three two great third down and long conversions with his legs and then the designed quarterback run there where you get lead blockers out in front and then him breaking tackles and cutting back and showing his dynamic running ability in the open field so the extra point with Brian Delaney and he hooked that one it is no good well, those can come back to haunt you in a game like this. So a little sour note at the end of a very positive start for Virginia, and no surprise the guy was leading the way. No, this is Bryce Perkins. He's a great player, great competitor, tremendous leader, in for a great game today, Dave. Wow, what a start for Virginia and for that guy, Bryce Perkins. The Virginia Tech defense had not given up a point, not a point, in nine straight quarters, 32 straight offensive possessions for their opponents. First possession of this rivalry game, and Bryce Perkins, 70 rush yards all on his own. The extra point was missed. Ryan Delaney will kick it deep. The Hokies, after the touchback, will come onto the field for the first time. And a guy who has really helped change this season for Virginia Tech, Hendon Hooker, the sophomore. He is undefeated as a starting quarterback for the Hokies. He was a great all-around athlete at Dudley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina. All-time leading passer, great basketball player as well. His dad was a heck of a quarterback at North Carolina A&T. He is in the MEAC Hall of Fame. 6-0. They have not lost with Hendon Hooker as their starting quarterback. The one loss in these last couple months was at Notre Dame. He did not play. So Hendon Hooker on the field for the first time as the starter in this Commonwealth Cup rivalry. And a pass fake. He will go down. 
held onto the ball, and he gets sacked by Noah Taylor. Noah Taylor comes scot-free off the edge. And one of the things to watch today is the way that Virginia uses their linebackers. Look at 14, Taylor off the edge. Just shows great quickness. He's got great length. Tremendous play. I'm excited to see how these Virginia linebackers are used today. You see Hooker now. He's out in space now. So he rushes. Now he covers. They do a lot of great things with their linebackers. From the shotgun, a little fake pitch, and that was effective. It got the defense looking the other way. Hooker, who is a good running quarterback, maybe not quite as big and strong, as powerful as Bryce Perkins, but the running game for Hooker has been a big part of their offense. One of the things that Hooker does so well is protect the football. He, he's 10 touchdown passes. He has not yet turned it over. When you're playing defense the way Virginia Tech's playing defense. If you can protect the ball on offense and not give a team field position, it's a recipe for success. So they got 14 yards, but they still have three to go on third down. Hooker, another design quarterback run. I guess we're going to see a lot of that on both sides. Nowhere, though, for Hooker to go and Eli Handback, who maybe has been the most important player on the Virginia defense all season long with the third down stuff. Eli Handback is a space eater inside. And you watch him work off of the blocks there, come down the line of scrimmage and make a tremendous play. Great lateral movement right there by Handback. Well, we asked Nick Howell, their defensive coordinator, who's been your MVP this year? And that's the guy that he pointed out. So he's been our best, most consistent player. Booming punt taken by Billy Kemp inside the 20, and he'll get outside the 20 to about the 23. Timeout here in Charlottesville. Cavs get the ball back when we return. Well, they started early on Thanksgiving Friday here in Charlottesville. You could not ask for a more gorgeous day at Scott Stadium on the campus of the University of Virginia. And the Cavaliers off to a tremendous start in this rivalry game. Virginia Tech, 32 straight possessions they had held their opponents without a point going back two-plus games. First time the Cavaliers had the ball. Bryce Perkins did almost all of it on his own, but he went right down the field and punched it in. 6 nothing Virginia. They get the ball for the second time. Still early in this one. A long way to go. And that's the first completion to the tight end, Tanner Cowley. He's become a good player for this UVA offense. Short gain on first down. I like Cowley. Cowley gives him a lot of versatility. You'll see him line up in the typical tight end position. You'll see him line up in the backfield. Split out like that. They can run some bubbles to him. Now, that was a play where Bryce had a chance to throw it to the X receiver or run it. And he's so smart working through his progressions that he was able to get to Cowley and pick up a few yards. So second down. Perkins this time throws it in the opposite direction a catch an immediate open field tackle by the free safety divine Diablo and Virginia Tech stopped the Cavaliers a couple yards short of the first down. That's what what Perkins does best is he, is he runs the ball extends the play with his legs and then he throws it in between the numbers within 10 yards with tremendous accuracy and he makes great decisions and quick decisions. So now they get themselves into a third and short. This is advantage Virginia. Third and long is no problem for the Cavaliers. <laughs> sure First doesn't. possession, third and two. Perkins stepped up just a little bit, getting ready to take the snap. He does. Looking to throw the ball, and he gets drilled as he throws it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Virginia Tech. Coming the other way, down the sideline. And the cut back inside by Jamari Connor. And Perkins is slow to get up. There is a flag during the return, I believe. In fact, there are three flags on the field. Perkins got absolutely destroyed as he threw that ball. During the return, personal foul. Return team, illegal blindside block. 15-yard penalty. First down. Now that will affect the field position. It will not affect the turnover as Connor and the Hokies come up with the football. Virginia Tech brings pressure off the short side here. You'll see, you see Floyd come in there for the hit. What surprised me about that play is on third and short, that Virginia Tech would have a, a slow developing pass route. I would have thought they'd try to get it out a little bit quicker. Three step, hitch, something quick over the middle, and they paid for it desperately. 
And Virginia can only hope that Bryce Perkins is okay. He took quite a hit there. It looks like uh, he he's is. He's a tough man. He's a tough, tough, tough man. Now the, the penalty is huge, though, because Virginia Tech was thinking they'd have the ball inside the UVA 20. They're back in their own territory. They hand it off. First carry of the afternoon for their tailback. The junior from Chesapeake, Virginia, Deshaun McLeese, who's done a nice job. Not a big runner, but an effective runner. I think it's important for Virginia Tech to establish a run game so that they can force Virginia to play some man-to-man -man on the outside. Their corners are good corners, not great corners, and I think they can take advantage of that matchup if they can establish the run game early. Virginia had one of the best cornerbacks in all of college football, Bryce Hall, but he has been out and won't come back and play this year. Hooker throwing down the field, and the pass is caught. There's one of those wide outs. I think with an advantage, Damon Hazelton, the transfer from Ball State, who's turned into a really good player for Tech. It's a corner route. It's a nice job. They get a matchup on a safety. Hazelton makes a nice break, good protection. Really nice throw, too, by Hooker. Now, Blunt's a good player, but he's a tough, tough matchup against the wide receiver. A play fake to McLeese. Hooker across the middle, incomplete, but here comes a penalty for him. Oh. Intended for Hazelton. That was Nick Grant in coverage. Uh, there was some contact. Holding defense number one. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. So they called holding there. Half the Not pass goal. interference. Watch this on the outside. They're playing without a middle safety. A little bit of a grab there. You see the the right hand on the on the shoulder or on the uh, back pad. That's tight. I don't know that you call that, but hey, it's a good point by you. It's almost like if his hand didn't get caught on yeah. the side of that yeah. that pad, made it look maybe a little worse than it was. I don't feel like he deterred the receiver's ability to go catch the football there. But he's got to play inside leverage, take away the slant when they're playing without a middle safety. So first and goal, Hooker. Hand off, and McLeese had nowhere to go. In fact, he may have lost a half a yard. <laughs> Eli handback. Virginia Tech has been outstanding offensively in the red zone. When you look at them nationally, they're ranked fourth. They're scoring 95% of the time they're in the red zone. They're scoring touchdowns over 70% of the time. Those are great numbers. And, and Virginia Tech on defense, not bad as well. So this is a key area of the field for both teams statistically. Changing the play here. Again, you got a tight end in the backfield alongside Hooker. That's Dalton Keene. Hooker's going to run it straight ahead. Kind of squirted through. Wasn't a big hole. He gets close to the five to set up third and goal. You know, I, I never liked third and five as a defensive coordinator on the five-yard line. I felt a little bit hamstrung. You know, what do I do, especially against a running quarterback? You know, do I, do I man him up? Do I double guys? Do I play for the quarterback run? How do I do it all? It's really t a tough spot for you defensively. of students here it's going to be loud inside this stadium today even though it's the Thanksgiving holiday so we'll see I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback draw here Hooker gives it on a jet sweep type play trying to get to the corner and a big hit stopped short of the goal line Trey Turner just could not get there and Nick Graham was in on the play he got penalized for the hold but he made a big stop there it's fourth and goal big tackle big tackle right there you know, they, Virginia they, Tech uses their receivers a lot in the run game with the jet sweep I'm not sure how much I like it there I would like to have seen something more up the middle with the quarterback, but uh, field goal up and good. So the Hokies turn the interception into three, but the Cavaliers stop them in the red zone and force the field goal. First quarter, 6 3, Virginia. And it was a switch at the top. LSU moves from one to two. Ohio State, of course, tomorrow gets Michigan, then the Big Ten Championship game. I, I mean, I do think that is a significant move for Ohio State. Oh, yeah. 
The, the, the seedings, huge. Uh, you, you figure Clemson's in that 2-3 range. You avoid Clemson in a semi if you're number one. And we got a good one here. Perkins with the completion. He had two receivers out there for a gain of eight. Good news for Virginia. The accelerant is back on the field. That's Bryce Perkins. And after that nasty shot, he came off the field. He wanted nothing to do with the trainers. He was more concerned going over the plays and the miscommunication in terms of his wide receivers with his quarterback coach Jason Beck. Remember, this kid is tough as nails. You can hit him all day. He's recovered from a broken neck in his career. The accelerant. I love that. Great description. And it, is, it is a part of his personal story. That neck injury some thought would end his football career. He took another hit there through low. And that was ruled a catch. No, from the uh, Official all the way behind the plate comes in late and says incomplete. It hit the turf intended for Terrell Jana. It's third down. So another hit on Perkins. That one kind of wobbled out there and clearly incomplete. A, a problem for Virginia has been protecting the quarterback. Now Bryce gets him out of a lot of situations with his ability to avoid a rush or a move. But when you're coming from his blind side like that, he can't see you. You've got to find a way to put a body on those extra rushers. So far, Bud is bringing people from everywhere, and it gets tough to figure out for the offensive line and backs. Tight end tally in motion. Perkins will keep it, and why not? Another first down and a huge hole up the middle. There goes Bryce Perkins. Inside the 20, all the way, touchdown. Wow. 67 yards. This is a dynamic, accelerant player. I'll tell you something now. You better be careful when you pressure a Bryce Perkins the way that Virginia Tech just pressured him because if he beats the pressure, there's nobody in the backfield that can catch him. What a play. Hokies have been burned twice now on those big rushes, and that one the biggest of all. This extra point up and perfect, so they kick it through this time. And the Cavaliers trying to snap a 15-game losing streak in this rivalry are leaning on number three. Bryce Perkins from 67 yards out. Cavaliers pad their first quarter lead. 15 years of misery in this rivalry for the Cavaliers. But Bryce Perkins has come to play this afternoon. 13-3. Virginia over their rivals, the Hokies of Virginia Tech. After another long Bryce Perkins touchdown run, Cavaliers will kick it off deep, and that will be another touchback. Both these teams talk a lot about how their offensive lines have improved as the season's gone on. Both teams are young, especially Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech starting two, two freshmen in the offensive line. Pretty amazing. Nowhere to run that time. Back another tackle for him. There are some of those young guys up front, including their center, Brian Hudson, a true freshman. A true freshman center who has to have the responsibilities to make the calls. Luke Tenuta, who's a red shirt freshman. They got all underclassmen up front. Luke Tenuta's uh, dad is a heck of a football coach, and Luke knows how to play the game. Now, for Virginia Tech, I like the fact they're trying to run the ball inside, but I think they, they better serve running inside with their quarterback. On a minute of an action-filled first quarter, Hooker with the quarterback straight up the middle. He slipped on the turf as he got across midfield. He does get a Virginia Tech first down. Well, you, you may well be right. I mean, they have been effective running the ball overall, but Hooker's ability on the ground is what really has changed this Tech offense. Well, the way that Virginia's playing inside right now, they're physical and they're fired up. They're playing with great energy. And I think that if they can get some quarterback leads, some quarterback draws, a design quarterback run like they just had there, that's going to be the most effective way for them to run the ball consistently. We'll see if they get the ball snapped. They do on the final play of the quarter. That jet sweep, another slippage. So maybe that part of the field is a little more slippery than somewhere else. Uh, we come to the end of the first quarter. Action filled, even from before kickoff. Bryce Perkins has been the star, setting up to be a career day for him. 
Cavs with the 13-3 lead. End of quarter number one. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. We're not that far away from the New Year's Six at Orange Bowl on December 30th. There will be an ACC team in that game, even if Clemson is in the playoff. Hooker looking to throw back the opposite direction on second down. Instead takes off and got drilled. So the first play of the second quarter does not get much for the Hokies. It's third down coming up. The CEO of the Orange Bowl is here today in Charlottesville. It is not a lot, but nope. it is a very strong possibility that the winner of this game, no matter what happens next weekend against Clemson, will represent the ACC and get to play in the Orange Bowl. From what we've seen today, they'll represent the ACC very, very well if they do play in the Orange Bowl. Third and nine for the Hokies. Hooker with pressure coming. He got picked up. Finally delivers, and that one is caught. fighting for yardage and the ball got poked out. UVA has it. After the play, sideline warning against the Virginia bench. This is their first. Uh, that was number four. You've talked about him already. Jordan Mack from his linebacker oh. spot to put that hit on right on the football. That was going to be a Virginia Tech first down. Instead, it's a turnover. That's an effort play. That's a linebacker turning and running to the football and putting his hat on the ball. What a great play because that, that was a big third down conversion into Virginia territory. You've got to love the way Jordan Mack plays this game. Tech has been so good in that regard lately, taking care of the ball. A costly turnover gives it back to Bryce Perkins and the Virginia offense. Perkins downfield, man, no, but it's complete. Inside the 40 and inside the 30 before Assis Dubois finally run out of bounds. Now here come the penalty flags. And we got a fight right along the brick sidewall with the Cavaliers bench coming to the aid of their teammate. Virginia Tech. A little frustrated on defense, obviously. Having trouble stopping Bryce, then Bryce fakes it, hits him deep. You gotta, you've got to let a guy go at the boundary. You can't carry your tackle all the way into the darn brick wall. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against number eight. Unsportsmanlike conduct against number 17. Those penalties all set. This is their first unsportsmanlike of the game. Well, Jeff got the directions mixed up. It was 17 on defense, 8 on offense, but the point is there'll be no extra yardage after the play. Those penalties offset. I mean, that's an obvious... Look at the block takes him all the way into the bricks, and you're coming to the defense of your, of your player. I guess you've got to be able to restrain yourself. It's, it's hard in a big game like this, but you've got to be able to do that. So a 32-yard gain... And Virginia, after coming up with the turnover, right away into Hokies territory. Perkins across the middle. Another good pass. Down to the 21-yard line. A gain of six on first down. Bryce Perkins, between the numbers and short, as I said, extremely accurate. Throws with great timing. And it opens up a lot of things, as we, we know, which is him running the football. Second and four, he does run it. This time, nowhere to go. It'll be third down. Well, you mentioned it, how Bryce Perkins, everybody knew he was big, strong, great athlete. There just were not many programs who looked at him as a quarterback. It's, a, it's an old story. We've heard it many times with many yep. great players in the history of college football. But Bryce Perkins got a well, chance to play quarterback here. He did. And it's unfortunate. You know, I was fortunate to coach his brother, Paul, who plays in the NFL now. Had him for four years. So I've been watching Bryce since he was 14 or 15 years old. And always a, a tremendous young man. But I, I doubted his ability to play quarterback. It's so great that he didn't doubt his ability to play quarterback. Before he does it in a, I love it. Going over the top, and it is incomplete. There was some hand fighting. Here comes the flag. Six. Pass interference. Offense, number eight. Penalty in force. Third down. And, I, you know, that that's a tough one, but I don't blame Justin Fuente for taking the penalty yardage. It's a big penalty. No, two things. You knock him out of field goal range for sure. And you make it third and forever, although third and 16 didn't serve him too well in the first quarter. 
Now Chapman may have been hanging on, but Dubois well, definitely it, did yeah. push off there. It's that shove at the very end. I mean, they were hand fighting. It was equal until the shove right at the very end. And we should point out Caleb Farley, outstanding defensive back. He has not been on the field. We're told, we asked, we're told back spasms for Caleb Farley. So I don't know if he's going to come back in the game or not, but that's a big loss for the Hokies defense. Third and 21 after the penalty. This is where Perkins has used his legs in this game. He's going to try to do it again. This time, though, the Hokies are not going to let him get loose. So Perkins just got back to the line of scrimmage, fourth and long. And now we'll see what Bronco Mendenhall wants to do. Maybe just play the field position game. I think you punted here for sure. Uh, Virginia Tech's defensive line made an adjustment there on third and long. Rather than trying to get up the field, they played lateral at a spy because once again now that was a designed quarterback run if there's nothing available down the field so on those third and long situations rather than penetrate and, and create gaps playing a little bit more lateral and making Bryce try to bounce That's Griffin the punter Maybe on Robinson this one may be returnable he's got incredible quickness and there goes Robinson Robinson outside the 45 almost back to midfield so the first real big special teams play of the day goes the way of the Hokies. We'll have the ball down 10 when we come back to Charlottesville. Well, the Hokies will run the ball with Hendon Hooker, their sophomore quarterback. He got dragged down. Noah Taylor has been everywhere in this first half with the tackle. And we are back here in Charlottesville for this rivalry game. Hokies Cavaliers. Final minutes of the second quarter, 13-3 Virginia, but the Hokies after a big punt return, good field position, second and long. Hooker throws it out. He's got Turner in the left flat with the catch. The turn up field first down, Virginia Tech, Trey Turner inside the 20 and inside the 15-yard line. Nice play here. Of course, Turner does a great job, but watch the block on the outside there by Hazleton. Just gets the DB turned inside, gives his runner the sideline. Tremendous job. Excellent play by Hazelton and Turner, and Hooker deliver the ball on time. So, first and goal, but outside the 10. Snowden creeping up, now he'll drop into coverage. Hooker is going to take off. Hooker trying to pick his way forward, got a couple yards. Well, we're under three minutes to go here in the first half. Virginia Tech will get the ball to start the second half. Virginia Tech needs to at least get a three on the board and pull within a touchdown. Obviously, a touchdown would be great, but as you just said, they've taken a couple, couple minutes off the clock, get some points, get a stop, and then get the ball to start the second half. They'll capture a little bit more. You see all those numbers scrolling along. The defenses have dominated in the second quarter of this game. Hooker throws a slap. Turner with the catch. Stayed on his feet. Took a huge hit as he got inside the 10. Maybe got an extra couple yards. Tough guy play from Trey Turner. But Joey Blunt, among others, were there to make the stop. Huge, huge third and eight here. Huge third and eight. Maybe one of the reasons Bronco called timeout. Make sure he gets his guys in the right call with the right mindset. Could be. Hooker has Dalton Keene alongside. Takes a snap. Stands in over the top. It is incomplete. It was picked off by Blunt, but out of bounds. And I don't know that Joey Blunt knows that it was ruled incomplete. Wow. He caught it and he's saying what? Fourth down. Let's look at it here. Heck of a play. Does he get it? Ooh. Wow. I, I guess I, it depends. I think he's got that. And this is a huge call. The ruling of an incomplete pass is under further review. Dave, this is a huge call. Because this if it's an interception, then it stays a 10-point game. Let's see. Right foot. I don't know if he's got possession yet, though. I think that would be the, yeah. the follow-up uh, question. Has uh, he secured possession of the ball? He has it uh, now for sure. Yeah, I, you know what? And, and I don't know if there's enough there to overturn it. I think that right foot Boy, is down close. before the left foot is out of bounds. Absolutely. But the question is, does he have possession of the ball? And that one... Might be tough to overturn. I think you're right, but uh, big decision here. 
After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Oh man, I think that's the right the right call. I uh, I think it's really close, but I just didn't see enough there to, to overrule it. What do you think? <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. I think too many times this year that standard has not been upheld of it has to be incontrovertible. It has to be clear and convincing evidence. I've seen too many instances where that has not been the case. This seems to be the case in this instance. The field goal is up and good. That's a three-point ruling instead of an interception. Yep. The field goal is up and good. The Hokies within a touchdown. The fans here just love these officials in Charlottesville. 13 to 6. Cavaliers, the Virginia head coach down on the field with Paul Carcaterra. Coach, how would you describe the performance of your quarterback, Bryce Perkins? Well, he's responsible for our points uh, right now. And so Virginia Tech responded after our initial couple scores. So whole new half. Specific to Virginia Tech's offense, what's the point of emphasis for your defense moving forward? Uh, quarterback run. Uh, they have a hard time maintaining possession and keeping uh, points on the board if they can't run the quarterback. Thank you, Coach. All right, and thank you, uh, Paul Carcaterra. It is halftime here from Charlottesville, the Commonwealth Cup rivalry. 13-6 Virginia over Virginia Tech. We'll take this break and have a word from our ABC stations. So on this gorgeous day in Charlottesville, a rivalry game that has rarely had as high stakes as this one. Virginia Tech and Virginia touchdown lead for the Cavaliers. Dave Fleming, Jim Mora, Paul Carcaterra back here in Charlottesville. Defense has dominated in the first half. Do we expect more of the same? I think so. You know, I think that early Perkins obviously made a, made a huge impact running the ball. But Virginia Tech's adjusted. Virginia's defense has been great in the red zone. We're looking forward to a great second half with not just the spot in the ACC championship game, the bragging rights, the end of the losing streak for the Cavaliers on the line. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, Bryce Perkins was just awesome, especially early in this game. Yeah, his first quarter was unbelievable. He's got nine rushes, 138 yards, 151 if you take the sacks out of there. Dynamic. But the problem is, is he's been their entire offense, and they've got to get it going in other ways. Because Virginia Tech has done a tremendous job adjusting defensively with their pass rush. They've kind of hemmed him in. Got three three and outs in a row. That's that's impressive, especially against a guy like Bryce. So and we'll I, see what happens. You know, I thought it was interesting. Bronco Mendenhall talked with Cart going to the locker room before halftime about if we take away Virginia Tech's quarterback run, they can't move the ball up and down the field. Hooker play fake on first down. His running back picked up a rusher, and he had time to find Hazelton downfield into Virginia territory across the 50 for a huge first play of the second half, 30 yards. You mentioned it, tremendous protection with the running back coming across and picking up Mack, but a great route on the outside, a little post-corner route, and Hazelton does a nice job running the route and well-thrown ball. So Hazelton's got 70 receiving yards. McLeese with the carry left side for a gain of two, maybe three. If we don't run the ball, things will get rough. That's what Justin Fuente just told me. He feels like Hendon Hooker and those speedy wideouts like Hazleton, who you just saw catch that ball, need to open up this offense, but it starts in the line of scrimmage. Defensively, how do you stop Bryce Perkins? Everyone wants to know that. He felt the first quarter was a disaster in terms of the way the defense played their lanes, but they settled down, and he was happy with that second quarter performance. Police gets the carry right side running, sort of picking his way forward, and he gets close to the first down. And maybe uh, Justin Fuente backing up what he told Clark about, we got to start to run the ball in different ways. McLeese, a couple productive runs. No, you have to be able to run the ball up inside so that Virginia's defense has to commit an extra guy to stopping the run. And then you get the matchups outside, the one-on-one -on -one matchups, where I think that Virginia Tech has an advantage. So it is, it's critical. Third and one. Hooker, high snap, hands it off McLeese, who just finds a way to lunge forward and get the Virginia Tech first down. That's an important conversion for the Hokies, who have a chance on this first possession of the second half to tie the game. They have won 15 consecutive games in this rivalry. The last time Virginia beat Tech, 2003. Virginia Tech is going to still play with a high degree of confidence in their down just seven. It's a mature football team. I wouldn't be surprised to see a shot play here. 
first down. Virginia may be showing some pressure. Snowden will come, and Hooker keeps it, goes right where he was. Hendon Hooker doing a Bryce Perkins impersonation. Inside the five, touchdown! Hendon Hooker matching the Virginia quarterback 34 yards an extra point away from Tech tying this game up great job with the ball great job with the fake really sold it it was hard to tell from up here where the ball was and certainly hard for the Virginia defense but what a start for Justin Fuente and his Hokies offense Brian Johnson, their place kicker, up and good. That missed extra point on the Cavaliers' side is looming large now as the Hokies have tied the game up and did Hooker on the ground. Just a great play, great blocks on the outside. we got two dynamic quarterbacks doing their thing today. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Thomas Jefferson's Rotunda here on what they call the grounds of the University of Virginia. Even the founding father might be chewing his fingernails at this point. Cavaliers trying to snap the long losing streak in this rivalry series. And the Hokies have come from behind to tie the game. Touchback, so the Cavaliers offense will have it for the first time in the second half. Bryce Perkins has been the offense for the Cavaliers. They have the ball for the first time in the second half with the game now tied 13 apiece. And Perkins throws to nobody. Incomplete second and ten coming up the uh, winning streak on the line for the Hokies the losing streak for the Cavs the winner of this game It's simple think about all the chaos all year long in the ACC Everybody's been talking about the chaos in the coastal week to week the predictions were changing It comes down to the winner of this game gets to play Clemson next week Virginia has never played in the ACC championship game. They've never won the coastal division since they split the ACC in half Perkins pressure will spin away and now is going to try to take off Bryce Perkins out of bounds made something out of not much at all but it'll be third down along Virginia Tech has switched their philosophy a little bit now we've got a flag way downfield this could be significant but okay. uh, they're rushing four more and they're doing a better job pressuring Perkins after the play was over personal foul Unnecessary roughness against number 80. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Third down. And after the play as well. So huh. it's third down and very long. Billy Kemp, the wide receiver, sophomore, when the play was finished. Chapman. What the heck? Wow. Just because you're covered up, young man, get free. Wow. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Boy, those, those are killers. And you're, you're, you know what? You're struggling on offense. You had three, three and outs in a row. You get yourself into third and maybe manageable, and now all of a sudden you've got big problems. That's after the play, so it's third and forever. And you can just imagine hmm. the pressure is starting to ratchet up a little bit, and maybe that frustration level. And yeah. Virginia thinking this has to be the year we get this done. Perkins on third and long from the pocket, throws incomplete. And that one was low. Intended for Joe Reed who's been very quiet in this game. It's fourth and 21 So the Hokies who went right down the field scored a touchdown to tie the game at the start of this second half now force a, a three and out And the penalty backs Virginia Dramatically affects field position We're Seeing a little momentum shift here for sure You know by some measure Virginia has been the best field position team in the country right. this year in college football. They are not winning the field position battle today. No, they're not. Within the punter from near the goal line. And he boomed one. They needed it. Robinson all the way back to the 31, and he takes a hit. So that was good special teams play by Virginia. 55-yard punt with basically no return. The Cavaliers defense back on the field when we come back on this gorgeous Friday in Charlottesville. People here in Charlottesville, for some reason, I mean, to me, it's just gorgeous noon on Friday after Thanksgiving. Perfect time for a college football game. They, they were hoping this game was going to be played a little later in the day. And I think their main worry was the students weren't going to show up because it is Thanksgiving break. The students are here in huge oh, yeah. numbers. They're here and they're fired up. They're seeing a good football game. They should be proud of their team. Virginia Tech has the ball back. 
play fake and an open receiver. That is Hazleton who will spin and get close to midfield. A first down completion for the Hokies. And in Hooker's a cool cat. Never rattled when things weren't going well in that first half. He attributes his compete level to the bright lights playing hoops in high school at a national level. He also told me his dad, Allen, was a quarterback in college. He taught him the mental part of the position. It helped that he was doing three-step drops as a young kid. His dad, Allen, a uh, MEAC Conference Hall of Famer. North Carolina a and quarterback for a lot of years. Hooker handed it off to McLeese, who's had some more running room here in the second half into Virginia territory on the first down run. Deshaun McLeese, the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. You think about all the great players in the history of Virginia Tech's program who have come from that part of this state, from the yep. Tidewater region, Norfolk, Newport News, Chesapeake, from Michael Vick. Oh, I got to coach a couple. Michael Bruce Vick, Smith, D'Angelo Hall, D'Angelo played Hall, against Ruth great Smith. One. Cam Chancellor was a great ball. Oh, Tyrod Taylor. I mean, really, going. there's a the, ton of them. The best players in the history of Virginia Tech's program have come from that part of this state. Police is another good one. Hooker, oh, nice. high stack, little fake, and then off and running. A nice open field tackle for the Cavaliers. Saved a bigger gain. Heskin Smith got him on the ground, but that's a first down tech. Virginia Tech has found the formula. They're doing a nice job of running the ball up inside, and they're starting to make some headway doing that. Less two and three yard runs, more five, six, and seven. They're getting the ball outside versus single coverage where they have the advantage, and then the mix of the quarterback design run. So right now, they've got Virginia a little bit off balance on defense. It's really the opposite early in this game. Those big touchdown runs by Perkins. The game has changed dramatically. Straight up the middle. And another good gain on the ground for the Hokies. This time the true freshman, Keyshawn King. This is a nice zone read inside and very nice decision by Hooker to hand it off. And then an excellent block by Dalton Keene so we can get the cut back there by Keyshawn King. Nice job. It's frustrating when you're a defensive coach and they're having it any way that they want it, like Virginia Tech is now. And what happens is you 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 start to doubt yourself. You start searching for a call, and you're searching for a call instead of sticking to what you really went into the game thinking would work for you. Hooker, another staff that was a little off the line. He had to reach up to take it. He is having his way on the ground now. Even with that little hesitation, he got positive yardage inside the 25. You're talking about a 6'4", almost 230-pound man running the ball and running run with physicality. He's not going to go down easy. You know, he doesn't quite look... No, not many quarterbacks look as powerful as Bryce Perkins. Right. But he's similar-sized. Yep. A little bit longer. You know, not quite as shifty, but he does have some power to him. Second down at five. Park said it. He's a, he's a cool cat. He's not flustered. Hands it off. A jet sweep motion. And the trip up saved a bigger gain. Turner was down. And he will get enough yardage for another Virginia Tech first down. They're in the red zone inside the 20 and close to the 15. The jet sweep has been an effective part of their run game all year. Their receivers have 35 carries on jet sweeps. Total inside the red zone. So this part of the field in this game, the Hokies offense, seven plays. Nine total yards, two field goals. Yep. So you said it. Virginia's defense has done a good job this part of the field. They're back in the red zone. Virginia Tech is swinging it out left side of the blocker in front. Robinson out into the open, inside the five, diving for the goal line and stopped just a little bit short. Tavion Robinson, who last week against Pitt was so close to a touchdown on a long play, gets just as close here this afternoon. Good call. Good, Good spot. Call. Perfect spot. 16 yards. It'll be first and goal. Another Tidewater kid who has a chance to be a great one for Virginia Tech. Yeah, he, he's impressive. Impressive in the return game. Impressive with the ball in his hands. Runs good routes. Explosive runner. First and goal. Hooker. Handoff. McLeese. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. And the Hokies have come all the way back to take their first lead of this rivalry game. Well, they are pushing the Cavaliers around here in the second half. A 
Eight plays, 71 yard drive, and from the one, McLeese punches it in. That's a young offensive line, but young and powerful offensive line just moving people out. This Virginia defense since the first quarter spent a lot of time on the field. That may be taking its toll. The first lead of the game for the Hokies. Ryan Johnson lines up the extra point. It is up and good. And you saw the reaction from some of those Cavaliers fans thinking this can't be happening again. The Hokies are thinking, yeah, we think this can happen again. Virginia Tech up by seven. I'm thankful for my family, my friends, football. Go Hoos. Thankful for my family, not only back home, but my family here in Blacksburg, Virginia. I'm thankful for my three sisters, Cooper, Julia, and Peyton. Thankful for my family, my teammates, um, my God, and happy Thanksgiving. Great to hear from uh, some of the players who are part of this rivalry game. Virginia Tech down 13-3 to and early. And looking like this might be the day where Virginia came up with a win to snap the losing streak. First chance to return a kick for Joe Reed, one of the best in the country. And every time he touches the ball, it's nervous time for the opposite special teams. But in the end, good coverage by the Hokies. 20 to 13, Virginia Tech its first lead. The Cavaliers, they spend all year thinking about this game. And Bronco Mendenhall does not hide from it. He says, look, it's not genuine if I downplay it and say it's just like any other game. It's not like any other game. They got the clock outside their locker room here at home, which literally, once this game is over, will be fully reset to <laughs> count down to next year's Commonwealth Cup matchup. They have not won this game since 2003. Bronco told us that he has not just a few, many Virginia people come up to him in the course of everyday life and say, I don't care what other games you win. I don't care if you win any other games. Can we please beat Virginia Tech? Yeah, I, I think that that uh, doesn't always hold true. I don't care if you don't win any other game. <laughs> I, I, I do agree you with you. You don't get many chances to beat Virginia Tech, but you're right. The significance of a win here is huge on this program and huge in what Broncos trying to establish. Second Ooh, eight. Eight. Perkins has got a man open, and it is caught by Reed. In the Virginia Tech territory, man, did UVA need that. Their first first down since their first play of the second quarter. Oh, what a throw. I got a little nervous there, but Joe Reed stretches out and get it. This guy is a heck of a good football player. Find a way to get the ball to Reed. He can make some plays for you. Now, this opens some things up for Virginia. It's been about 26 minutes of game time since they had a first down. It does open something up. I mean, that's not huge, but that's a nice gain of four yards on first down by Talapapa. At this point, Virginia will take a five-yard first down run all the rest of the game. And they brought a corner blitz. Virginia Tech brought the blitz. Talapapa was able to cut it back and get five. So now, hey, we've got the sticks to our advantage at second and five. To the 42-yard pass play from Perkins to Reed. This one to Reed again, and he takes a huge hit right at the first down mark. Held on to the football. Rayshard Ashby had that one lined up, and Joe Reed had to hang in there. My goodness. This is what Bryce does best. He throws it inside the numbers, between the numbers. I tell you what, Reed showed some, some guts right there catching that. Then he did a nice job of protecting himself because he knew he was going to take a hit. He knew it was coming. Well, first and ten inside the 30 down at the 25 Cavaliers trying to answer playing from behind for the first time all game Perkins is reading pressure here. He thinks pressure's coming. He changed the play and they Rush four throws a little high Incomplete good coverage there Second and ten good Coverage Hurrying it up a little bit now it's a good time for a Bryce Perkins run. What do you think, Dave? I, I think almost any time is a good time <laughs> for a Bryce Perkins run, but I'm with you. They clear out the backfield. Here comes Ashby. He gets away, then throws it incomplete. He had Reed, but he was under so much pressure that he did well just to avoid the sack. Well, that might have been the best thing he's done. Well, it's not the best thing he's done all day. That, <laughs> that would not be a good statement, but... Throwing it out there and put it high because I'm gonna tell you even if he catches it It's a four or five yard loss and so now they're at least at third and ten. They're on the edge of field goal position So they can get some points 
opens some things, some things up on third down. Uh, these are those spots over these 33 years where Bud Foster always likes to dial up some oh, sort of pressure. He'll bring it now. We'll see if he does it here against the dynamic oh. quarterback Perkins. Maybe that's the factor. He left it open. Touchdown. 25 yards out, an extra point away from tying this game up. Georgia Tech decided they'd rush four and play zone. And Billy Kemp did a nice job of finding the hole in the zone. And then Bryce Perkins playing quarterback, like Bud's trying to make him do, played quarterback and made a heck of a throw. Good move by Kemp to get into the end zone. Oh, it's a good game. And even that one, you mentioned a good delivery, but the power of his rushing ability. You yeah. deter the pressure, you get a normal look, you give him time, and he delivered on third and ten. Right to Kemp, who made that quick move upfield. And the Cavaliers trying to break the long losing streak have come from behind to tie the game at 20 apiece in front of a great crowd. Bryce Perkins is a cool customer. He doesn't say a lot, but a great leader. The team is dependent on him now more than ever. Booming kickoff through the end zone for a touchback. Hooker will throw as the Hokies get the ball back, and there is Tavion Robinson. The Virginia Tech fans, I think, are thinking, let's get 83 the ball as much as possible, the way he's played these last few weeks. Great block on the edge by Trey Turner on Snowden. <laughs> Virginia is playing with fire a little bit now with this little bubble or quick. They're, they're, they're outmanned out there. Virginia Tech is finding it, and we saw it there right before the touchdown. They're making some hay with that play. So we've got to add numbers to the outside of Virginia Tech's, of Virginia's defense. Second down three. Hand off McLeese, or that's not McLeese. That's the true freshman King who got shoved out of bounds short. Be third down and a long two or a short three. Oh, you talk about a big third and two in the third quarter. This is it. Unbalanced. We've got everybody lined up to the field of Virginia Tech's offense. Hooker straight ahead. First down, Hokies. And he did not hesitate. No. That was a design quarterback lead. And big man like that, he's hard to bring down on third and two when he gets a full uh, head of steam like he did there. Yeah, you know, in some ways, that play epitomizes how Virginia Tech's offense has changed since yep. he took over. He's yep. undefeated as a starter, and that really is the main reason why. Mm -hmm. Final minute of quarter number three, play fake. Hooker heaves it downfield. He's got a man, and it is caught by Turner. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 61 yards. And after defense dominated for so long in this game, the offenses are getting it going with big plays. Virginia decided to bring pressure there. It got blocked up. They got the single coverage on the outside. The safety got caught out a little bit, a little bit out of position. And that's a touchdown. That's a couple of really nice plays in a row by Hooker. The third and two conversion and then the downfield throw. Extra point is up and good. The answer for the Hokies. The touchdown pass from Hendon Hooker to Trey Turner, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Catch and run. Seven point lead for the Hokies. Be back right after this. This game has changed so dramatically. Nobody could get a first down for a while now. Touchdowns are flying fast and furious. Third touchdown of the third quarter for the Hokies to put Virginia Tech back in front, 27 to 20. Maybe a busted play. Perkins, though, found an opening, and he completes one down the field to midfield. Another broken tackle. Well, we've got a couple quarterbacks that are telling us, hey, you know what? We're not just runners. We can fire the ball. Oh, that's a nice move right there. Darrell Jana was the wide receiver yeah. who came open. Oh. 
just the poise that Bryce Perkins showed on a busted play to keep his eyes downfield and make that throw is really impressive. So one play and right back into Virginia Tech territory inside the 40. Perkins over the top. Another chance downfield. He dropped it right in there and it's complete. Assis Dubois inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal. 29 yards. Did he get the foot down? I don't know. I don't know. If I were Virginia, I'd go fast. I'd get up there and run the play. That's into the third quarter. Oh, they can't. Third quarter comes to an end, so I would imagine that while we go to break, they are going to take a look at this one. We'll see. Whatever they decide, something has happened to this rivalry game. From quiet and defensive oriented to the quarterbacks taking over big plays all over the field. One quarter to go with a lot on the line in Charlottesville. Virginia Tech with the 27 20 lead after this message and a word from our ABC station. 30 yard completion stands. It's first down and goal. Virginia trying to tie the game back up after the Hokies just went back ahead. Perkins, a little run throw and a great catch by the tight end, one handed style to power his way inside the five. I mean, that's three yards that they wouldn't have had. Tanner Cowley came up with the ball. That was the same play they ran in third and two in the first half. Came up about a half a yard short right there. It gives them a good three. They'd have liked that three in the first half, but they'll certainly take it here. Gets second and four on the four. Uh, you've got some options now, especially with a quarterback like, like Bryce Perkins that can run it. Even though we have a full quarter to play, Bronco Mendelaw, I have to think, is thinking well, he wants to punch it in. And Reed in the backfield here. What's that all about? Right. Different formation here. And Perkins, very rare time. He goes under center, spins to the right, cuts it back middle. Perkins to the one. Stops short, third and goal. Reed was a decoy. <laughs> he was for all of us. I, I like the way Bryce Perkins plays football, obviously, uh, but just the toughness he shows, the grit, but more importantly, his poise. He, he never seems rattled. And, and when you're a quarterback that presents yourself that way to your team, everybody else takes hold of that, and they react the same way. Third and goal. From the pistol, Talapapa behind Perkins. They bring Jana in motion, hand it off. Touchdown! Wayne Talapapa, the sophomore. From Hawaii, a long way from Charlottesville, but he's in this Commonwealth Cup rivalry as the Cavaliers are a point away from tying it up. They've got the, 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 the safety. Floyd isolated, and they ran it right at him. Remember, this was after their first touchdown to take the early lead. Extra point was hooked wide left by the place kicker, Brian Delaney. This one is up, and it is good. So even with the make there, that still looms large. Virginia, instead of leading by a point, that touchdown ties it up 27-27 here in Charlottesville. Us this game with huge implications. The winner will play for the ACC championship against Clemson next week. Virginia and Virginia Tech going back and forth. A returnable kickoff here for Robinson of the Hokies with his speed to the outside. And he gets across the 40 yard line. So here comes Virginia Tech right back at it as they hand the ball off coming right side. That little fly sweep for a nice gain, a first down gain. In fact, Trey Turner, who is having a big afternoon for the Hokies. That jet sweep has been really effective for Virginia Tech all year. Tonight they had they had a touch a touchdown. I think it was called back, but the second half they've had a couple of nice ones. Trey Turner's a dynamic player. He's making plays down the field in the pass game. And that was a nice run. Well, first and ten into Virginia territory. All of a sudden the defenses are back on their heels on both sides. Play fake. Hooker whistles one in there right to Hazelton. Another Virginia Tech first down. It's a, it, like I said earlier now, Virginia Tech has found a formula. They're running the ball well. Even though the jet sweep is unconventional, it's a good run. And it forces Virginia to play a little bit more single coverage on the outside. And, and there's a little bit of a mismatch there. Virginia Tech and Hazelton and Turner, those guys are good receivers outside. 
clock continues to run under 13 minutes to go. Just feels like we are headed for a fantastic finish. McLeese slipped, trying to make the cut. It might not have mattered. He had nowhere to go. Takes a loss of a couple yards. That's what Virginia needs. They need to create some negative plays, get UVA, or I'm sorry, Virginia Tech behind the sticks a little bit, and then they can be a little bit more creative with what they're doing in coverage. Be fun to see what they do with Snowden here, what they do with Mack, what they do with Taylor. A lot of good players out at linebacker. Hooker on second and 11. Couple little fakes. Trying to go middle. Instead, he throws over the top incomplete. His yeah. receiver, Turner, came back for the ball, but it was too wide. That was well covered. He didn't have anything there. He wanted to get the ball down the middle. To Hazleton, I believe, and, and couldn't quite do it. So now third and 11. Not oh. slam dunk field goal range either. No. I guess the question here is do you do something safe and try to get enough yards to maybe kick a, a field goal, or do you, do you try to get the, the 12 plus and, and keep the drive alive? It gives a really good pass rush. Third and 11. Hooker. And it looks like a pretty safe call. But safe, maybe they're sorry they called it because he had nowhere to go, no gain. It'll be fourth and long, and this will not be an easy field goal try for the Hokies. So Hooker and offense after the big gains down the field, stuffed inside the 30 for Brian Johnson, who's long this year is 44 yards. A field goal try, attempting to put the Hokies back ahead. Kicking into the student section in the mud. Yeah, this part of the field has been a little slippery. We'll see. Good snap and hold. The kick is on the way, and it is booming right on through his season-long 47 yards. That was impressive. Well, Virginia Tech back ahead, 30-27, under 11 to go in this rivalry game. One of the great football coaches in the country, assistant, head coach, whatever, Bud Foster today is his final regular season game on the sidelines with Virginia Tech. He's not going away. He'll be around the program a lot, still going to live close to campus. But Bud Foster retiring at the end of this season. His defense has a lead, but just a three-point lead. The game has changed so dramatically, Jim. The, the offense has come to life. Just going back and forth. The offense was so quiet in the first half, really on both sides. Right there, that's awesome. Virginia Tech has been explosive. 30-27, Virginia gets the ball back, down three. Under 11 minutes to go. Bryce Perkins with some pressure coming. We'll get rid of it over the middle. He's got Dubois. Open. Still going. Inside the 20. Still going inside the 10. And he won't go down. Dubois. It's going to be first and goal, Cavaliers. Oh, Bryce Perkins is about to get sacked and just stands in there and delivers it down the field. Watch the rush here. Perkins about to get hit from behind. Steps into it on the dime and then watch the block. Just get off of me, young man. Just get off of me. What a play. What? 67 yards. The Cavaliers trying to snap that losing streak first and goal to go back ahead if they could punch it in. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. I got goosebumps. Perkins will look to run it himself. Inside the five, down to the four. This is Bryce Perkins' time. We know about him on the ground, but those last three drives, we've seen him through the air. He told me last year he was running around just trying to make plays. This offseason, he went deep into film study and his upper body mechanics. I'll tell you what, Virginia Tech has loaded the box, and Bryce Perkins has feasted. What a player. From Arizona State to a career-threatening neck injury to junior college here to Charlottesville. Where he has been a huge part of this program's turnaround under nine minutes to go in Charlottesville. Hokies lead by three. A wild second half. Perkins going to run one on one. Can he beat his man? The answer is no. Dax Hollifield was right there and shoved him out of bounds. That is a tremendous open field tackle by Dax Hollifield. This guy right here was one of the most celebrated 
high school players in the country. And to be able to bring down a guy like Bryce Perkins one on one in the open field. That's why he was so celebrated. Look at him. Look at the discipline. Doesn't cross over. Stays balanced. Keeps his head up. Really a tremendous open field tackle by Dax. Third and goal. Kemp comes in motion. Perkins in the pocket. Now scrambling. Perkins gets hit and goes down. You can just hear the crowd when he starts to go anticipate the run. He wanted to hang in there and throw the ball. In the end, he takes the sack, and Virginia is going to try for a field goal to tie the game. He's got nowhere to run, you know, with, with Dax sitting back there, with Ashby sitting back there, and they're using two guys to spy him. And now Delaney trots on the field with under eight minutes to go, 7.54 to be precise. 17 to 21 field goal kicking on the year. This one almost like an extra point from the left hash mark, 25 yards to tie the game. Snap and hold, kick is good. Well, he punched that through. He did. He wasn't thinking about it. And that's a good sign because this is the kind of game that feels like it's coming down to a kick yeah. or some play late. Well, the Hokies use the big pass play and then the right foot of their junior place kicker, Brian Delaney, to tie the game up. Bronco Mendenhall, who has put so much on this one, this program has taken all kinds of steps. They need this step, though, to beat the Hokies. These two teams have been really good on defense for most of the year, but it's been the offenses here in Charlottesville that have taken over this rivalry game. Robinson outside the 20. Yet smothered. The ball came out. It's still out. And I think that was King, not Robinson. He, he may well have been down. Yeah, they're spotting it at the 20, the side judges. Moving on the field as the runner was down. First down, Virginia Tech. So they ruled him down. Now, Virginia thinks they came up with the football. And that was King. Was he down? Yeah, yeah. he was definitely down. Good ruling on the field. Virginia Tech is 6-0 since he took over as the starting quarterback in the games that he has actually started, been healthy enough to start. He has still not thrown an interception this year. That says a lot. Tremendous decision maker. And off McLeese, right side, big opener. And cuts it middle, then back to the sideline into Virginia territory. Deshaun McLeese has had a big second half. Well, they get the edge here on the outside run, the outside zone. Play. Oh, actually, a little counter play. They seal the edge. Tremendous job by Hazleton on the edge, getting a block. And then a good run. And this is going to really help Virginia Tech just establishing this first down run. It just opens up everything for you. Play fake, Hooker will throw left side and it's dropped. Turner had his hands on it incomplete. I should correct myself because Hooker did throw the Hail Mary interception. Yeah. I mean, it counts. But if you want to count that, I mean, I, I'm not going to count that against him. At I, the end of the first half, he just heaved one up uh, toward the goal line, and it was intercepted. So that officially is first interception right. of the year. But when we when we talked to him, and someone made the comment, you know, you seem like you're very careful with the football. He said, no, 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 I'm not overly careful. You know, I'm going to still sling it in there, and I'm not going to shy away from making plays. But he's a good decision maker with the ball in his hands, both in the run game and the pass game. Second and long after the penalty for Hooker and the Virginia Tech offense. Hand off McLeese. Got back to the line. That's it. Haskins Smith, Charles Snowden. Virginia's defense is in a good position here with under six to play. Great game today in Charlottesville. Third and 19. Hooker in the pocket, and those receivers are going down the field. This one is intercepted. Picked off. That's the first real interception of the year thrown by Hendon Hooker. And Noah Taylor, the linebacker, back in coverage, comes up with it. 
Noah Taylor. Noah Taylor is an outside linebacker. He's six foot five, and they have no problem because of his athleticism playing him in space. And watch him here. Watch him get some depth. He gets the reroute, the depth, and then watch him stretch out to get that interception. That's a six five man working in space. Tremendous. I've talked about these linebackers all day and their versatility. Great example over there. Remember now, he started the game with a sack, and yeah. now he's got a pick. Of all of them, maybe he's had the best game of oh, those yeah. Virginia linebackers. Can Virginia march down the field and take a lead in this rivalry game? A pass to Reed, who slips a tackle. Joe Reed upfield with that forward momentum got close just a little bit short it'll be second and a half a yard I, li I like that play and I'll tell you why I like it it gets it out of Bryce's hands quickly and you get it into Reed's hand who we know because of his kick return ability is a tremendous open field runner he will make some plays taking a short catch and turn it into something long a second and a yard approaching four minutes to go Virginia 30 Virginia Tech 30 with the winner playing for an ACC championship. Perkins throws that slam to Hoyle with the catch. First down Cavaliers into Virginia Tech territory. Down to the 46 yard line. That right there, okay, that's Bryce Perkins' game. Catch it, get rid of it quick on inside throws. We've got, we got uh, Joe Reed limping off the field. That could be significant, but this is what Virginia does best. Catch it and throw it or let Perkins run it. Tie game, final three minutes in Charlottesville. Perkins in the pocket with time. Over the top, Dubois incomplete. And Virginia cannot believe there wasn't a flag throw, maybe because the ball wasn't catchable. Well, it wasn't catchable because... <laughs> it's a chicken or egg question. Yeah, was it, question, was it catchable got, only because of the hold? Yeah, I mean, he, got, he gets jacked up right there. Connor definitely yeah, grabbed it. He's got it. a hold of his jersey. There's no way to get... Of course it's uncatchable. And generally, Boy. that's just generally that's just an automatic call. Uh, that's that's a that's a tough no call right there for Virginia. I don't, I, somebody's got to see that, even if it's the somebody it's not saw the it. official behind the yeah. play. He just decided not to throw. Maybe he didn't have. He, back to might not have had a good angle. Field judge, I don't know, but you get you got to call that. So second and 18. Right. Perkins will run it, and Virginia Tech got him to the ground. Down to the 40. Tremendous job by Belmar there. Of what you teach your pass rushers is, is you get to the level of the quarterback. Okay, and then you start to throttle down and work back or work inside. You start to go up the field past Price Perkins, and he's going to get out. You give him too much a lane. But right there, Belmar just settled at the depth of the quarterback, was able to work back and make a nice play because there was some room, as we saw up the left sideline. Third and 16. Of the timeout. Perkins in the pocket throws, and that one completed fairly short. Now pushing forward and shoved out of bounds almost to that spot that you were talking about, down to the 31, and the field goal team is running out on the field. Brian Delaney, here's your chance. I like that Bronco Mendenhall was decisive. There was no hesitation. We're gonna, what are we going to do? Hey, field goal. Now, if you're a kicker, you love that confidence that your coach is showing in you. And, and this kid's got confidence. That last kick, boom, he popped it right through. But it's a little bit different now. This could be for the game. Be very close to his career long. Officially 48-yard try for the junior Brian Delaney from the state of Virginia. The kick is on its way. And it is good. Three seconds away from snapping what has been a 15-year nightmare losing streak to their in-state rivals and advancing to their first ACC championship game. The play call before, they set it up for Brian Delaney, and he boomed it through. And I think what you said about the game tying field goal, he kicked it. It was much shorter, yeah. but it was a very confident kick. And Bryce Perkins... Thrilled with his place kicker, 33-30, Cavaliers back in front. That was just beautiful late-game execution. 
Situational football, third and 16 to set it up for the next play, and it worked. Now can the Virginia defense hold on for a win? They're going to pooch that kick short. It's going to be taken, and the stumble. The return man went down inside the 20, so that worked out beautifully. For Worst starting field position for the Hokies all game. They need at least three to keep the game going. Hendon Hooker will start to scramble. Hooker is going down. Lost a couple yards getting sacked on first down. Sam Sandier, part of that linebacker core. The linebackers have made a lot of big plays all year for the Cavaliers. And that was a big one from Zandier. Yeah, that started with coverage downfield. Really good coverage. The pressure came immediately. They didn't block Eli Anbeck. And in fact, that was Matt Gam who was sort of stacked up with Anback who gets the sack. Another timeout for Virginia Tech. The Hokies are going backwards. Matt Gam made a really big third down stop in the third quarter. And then this sack here. I mean, they don't block him. And, and, and you know, Virginia does some unconventional things in their pass rush and bring in linebackers and bring in defensive backs. And right there, they confuse the left tackle. And uh, and they got the sack off of it. You don't want to play it too soft here because they have to go for it on through fourth down. And you don't want it to be a fourth and short where the quarterback can run it. Third and 21 from the end zone. Hooker. The ball came out. Virginia has it. The 15-year wait is almost over. It's a minute and one from being over. What a great play. And of course, Jordan Mack, the man in the middle, comes up with the fumble recovery for the touchdown. Oh, my. Get out of the way if you're down there on the field in a minute and a second. a penalty against the Cavaliers. It doesn't matter. Delay of game doesn't matter. Shouldn't matter. The play that essentially has ended Virginia Tech's winning streak in this rivalry. I think Alonzo was a guy who poked it out. Mack and Handback were both there. Two seniors playing their last game in Charlottesville. Well, Handback got it. You know what? Hats off to him. Four years. He's never missed a game. What Eli a start. What a start. And, uh, are they going for two? No. They are. Well, they, up nine. I guess they're figuring it doesn't get to 11. Nine or much matter. No, and in fact, they're not going for anything. They don't want to risk a block. He don't want to risk a block and return to make it so. I'll tell you what, that's smart football. Bronco, way to go, baby. So 50 plus seconds on the clock. <laughs> To that guy. Well, we, we're seeing what it means. The look on his face there as he celebrated. He, now he was go, let's go for one, but he was celebrating. I love it. 
That might be the first high step that Bronco Mendenhall has ever done down the sideline in his long, distinguished coaching career. There are a lot of people who thought this was a strange fit for a guy who spent his whole life, basically, in the Rocky Mountains and west of that. I think all that's over. Good ball coaches are good ball coaches. They can adjust. They can adapt. They can communicate with different types of young men. He's a stud. He is a good ball coach. Another one of those pooch kickoffs. And it's going to go out of bounds. Virginia almost recovered that. He did. Hooker, the throw. And I, for Virginia, that's fine, right? That's fine for Virginia. Hazelton with the catch, stepped out of bounds. Didn't take long. First down, Virginia Tech to the 44-yard line. Just don't get beat over the top. Don't put yourself in a position where there's a chance for pass interference down the field. That's what you've got to make sure you don't do for your Virginia's defense. Hooker gets hit, hit so hard, and driven backwards. Eric Fambui with the sack. I guess Virginia Tech uses its final timeout. Six sacks for this Virginia defense. So a quick timeout for us here in Charlottesville. The celebration about to start when we come back. Things are about to wrap up. Virginia has waited a long, long time for this moment. Hooker across the middle. Complete to Robinson into Virginia territory. The clock will stop on a Hokies first down. 41 seconds to play. But the lead for the Cavaliers after the defensive touchdown is nine. Hooker takes a snap again. And Hooker's going to heave it down the right sideline into coverage, but a jump catch by Trey Turner inside the 10. So hold off that celebration, at least for a few more moments. It was never just going to be easy for the Cavaliers. Never. First and goal. And the Hooker will fumble it and pick it up and spike it down, and the penalty flags are thrown. Illegal forward pass against the offense, number two, five-yard penalty, lost it down. This also has a 10-second down. Please, 10-second oh. runoff, please reset the clock. So the 10-second runoff seconds. is huge as a part of that. One of the problems when you're a shotgun team, you never get under center. A situation like this happens, you're not used to being there. Most significant thing, though, Dave, is that 10-second yep. runoff. So now, basically, you got to score here. And then maybe you would have two plays. You're reaching. If, yeah, I'm reaching. Uh, for let's, sure. let's enjoy the enjoy the Virginia <laughs> victory here. Second and goal. Virginia Tech trying to at least make them sweat here these final few seconds. Hooker to the end zone, incomplete. And now the clock all the way down to four. It took a lot of that, that, that did not take nine seconds, I didn't think. Well, they they let the clock run to, I think, to about nine before they even snapped it. All right. So this will likely, likely be the final play. They're getting ready to go after their head coach. Hooker toward the end zone, incomplete. Game over. Here they come. They waited 15 years for this, and now we get to watch them celebrate. since 2003 that Virginia had won this game. They had never played in the ACC championship game until now. They will with the star of this one, Bryce Perkins. Let's go down to Paul Carcaterra. Bryce, you dominated on the ground in the first half. What gave you the confidence that you could get it done through the air in the second? Man, I just had to, I had to calm down. As the office, we just had to calm down. And let the game come to us and just slow it down. And after we got a rhythm, you know, we were hard to stop. Coach, come on in here.
What does this guy mean to your program? He's helped us do things that haven't been done here for a long time. Appreciate his leadership, not only his character, but couldn't be more proud of him. I'm really lucky to be his coach. You haven't been here for 15 years, but Virginia Tech has beaten Virginia 15 straight times. Describe this scene now. Yeah, that, that's over. That streak is over. Mm -hmm. No more, no more, no more. Bryce, kid from Arizona. What made you think this moment would be possible? Man, I just believe in the coaches and everything um, for what they were doing, for what they were building as a program. I came here two years ago on Thanksgiving, and I knew this program was different. And I just knew if I stayed true and, um, and everybody in the culture behind this program, that we were going to be great. Coach, seven years, seven different coastal champs. Why Virginia this year? Leadership, player leadership and belief. They absolutely believed it was possible. I've just been lucky to help them. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. What a win for those two guys and for everybody associated with this Virginia football program. A day that they will not forget for a long time here in Charlottesville. 39-30, the final score for Scott Matthews, our producer, for Anthony DiMarco, our director, for Jim Mora, for Paul Carcaterra, Dave Fleming saying happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for being with us. Cincinnati, Memphis, right here on ABC after these messages.